name's Lisa Detlinger and I'm Program Director for Healthy House. We're up here on our living roof, which is home to our two beehives. Global Bros is a very small uh, environmental nonprofit organization. Our mission is to grow greener, healthier neighborhoods. And uh, we're gonna take you for a little tour now of Healthy House. Anything that comes from Healthy House will focus on healthy eating, healthy living, environmental education, or environmental equity. This is open to the community, and uh, we have no closed offices. We host yoga the first Wednesday of every month. We have family cooking classes, kids cooking classes, and these are all uh, facilitated by partners of ours. Okay. Um, so this is uh, meant to look like a shotgun because we're in Portland, and you know it's a historic neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And uh, but it was built with sustainability in mind. So what exactly does that mean? Built with sustainability? Does that mean really good insulation? Or? Really good insulation. The foam insulation. The mini splits on the walls. Hardy board cement siding that's like guaranteed to last 100 years. The walls are two by six framing with foam insulation, so it's like a R. 38 instead of R13. Yeah. Um, so it's like three times the, the insulation value. We have the mini split unit, so. Um, each room kind of has its own temperature control, mm -hmm. so you're not eating the whole house to get the one room you're in right. warm kind of thing. We do films in here as well, mm -hmm. so yeah. uh, there's a storage behind the yeah. wooden doors, and so all the tables can be put up, all the chairs can be moved <laughs> to the side, or we can set up classroom style. Uh, and we would welcome you if you're ever in the neighborhood and you yeah. know, you need a community space, we would welcome you to, mm -hmm. to use this yeah. space. So this is the breezeway, which would be the hallway if it was a traditional shotgun house. Um, but we use it for our art openings and as an art gallery. We try to use local artists. We basically work in 21 of the neighborhoods in Louisville, mainly in West and South Louisville. Um, and all of those neighborhoods are experiencing the urban heat island effect mm -hmm. due to the loss of tree canopy. Um, and they are the most underserved neighborhoods with also food insecurities. So we try to get artists from those areas. These artists, actually, it's multiple artists, they are from Manuel's um, look, uh, Young Earth Activist Club. Okay. So um, oh. that's, and that's the focus work. of this uh, yeah. opening is in our hands and they're saying that they're the generation that's going to be most affected by uh, the climate crisis. And so it's still in their hands and they can make a change. So it's pretty cool, all different kinds of mediums. Uh, when it's nice and sunny, this building gets great sunlight. Well, I can do not usually have lights on unless it's a day like today. Um, but this is a great hallway, the sun beams in. Now what are we looking at right here? This is uh, one of our two rain gardens. <coughs> So all of our downspouts are disconnected on this building and they uh, flow into the rain gardens. You would think it looks dead, that you would cut that down and wait for it to come back up in the spring, but actually during the winter, uh, those grasses and plants mm -hmm. have seeds on them that still feed the habitat that's located in the vacant lots next door. And we'll look, we can see in the kitchen a little bit better our living room. So you guys use that upstairs space there? Um, up above on us. the roof. Oh, yeah, 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 it's a living room. Oh, ooh, awesome. nice. So, that's really cool. Yeah, it's a living room. This is where our bees are. Oh, awesome. Now, I knew there was a buzz about this place, but I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the name of our newsletter, too. Buzz. <laughs> so, that is a living roof. It's painted white, so that helps with the temperature up there. Um, it's covered with sealant which uh, is a succulent type plant. It can be walked on. We've had Pilates and yoga classes up there. On the roof. And yeah, and of course we do, you know, beehive demonstrations. Our uh, beekeepers are volunteers that work with us. And we have two hives up there right now. Cool. Several months ago, back at the beginning of August, we harvested about 18 pints of honey. Wow. So how many bees would live in each of the hives? About 40,000. Wow. Uh, having a beehive on our roof, you know, this is really cool, but is there any kind of worry with the bees in such close proximity to people? Oh, no. no. So bees, bees, will, um, bees come and go from the hive at the level of the hive. Mm. So if you stand out, you know, underneath the hives, you watch them to just come by like at the same level 
is on top of the building. Okay. So if you're walking around the building at ground level, you never see the bees. Okay. Right there. Right. Yeah. There's some on the roof. You walk, and, and like even if you're up on the roof, they just you know, fly around yeah. here. Um, they're pretty used to people, so they get pretty tame pretty quick. They get used to people pretty quick, and they're pretty docile. I mean, we've had yoga and Pilates. The only time they ever come down here and get in the building is if when we're harvesting honey, mm -hmm. and you get honey on you, they're going to follow the honey. Uh, so now, I know you said you got 18 pints. How often do you harvest out of a... That was, that was the first time. So you first usually time. don't okay. harvest very much the first year. Okay. Um, it's like the next year, once they... Like they'll kind of like double in size. You yeah. can put more kind of racks on there, and which increases the population of the bees and increases your honey production. Yeah. And honey tastes different mm -hmm. depending yeah. on where you're at. Our different honey time of year. is really light. Uh, you can see the color over here. Yeah. Do you mind if we do a little yeah. tasting? Let's yeah. Bring it on. Yeah. Sure. Cool. So uh, it's really light. You can see that. <laughs> And it's uh, really sweet. And mainly in the spring, our bees are going two lots over mm -hmm. to uh, Amanda Fuller's Lots of Foods. Mm -hmm. It is uh, her group, and she takes in, uh, vacant lots and turns them into gardens. Um, so she has a grove of almond trees. Oh. So our bees are going over there and getting the pollen off the almond trees when they're flowering in the spring. So it's Whoa. got a little bit of a nutty note at the end of it when you're tasting it. So mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. 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 Come help yourself. Got a sticky situation. Yeah, yeah you do. <laughs> so it's what, hard not to. what's really interesting to me is like it, it really is a different color of honey than I'm used to seeing in a supermarket. Yeah, the supermarket one's really dark mm -hmm. from all the flowers. Yeah, the clover. The clover. Yeah. 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 Really mm -hmm. The the mix. Like mixed honey mm -hmm. um, that, mm. that might come from like a lot of various flower sources. Um, you know, it can be darker, lighter, and mm -hmm. later in the summer when you get all the wildflowers, that's when you get the really, really dark honeys. Right. Um, it's, it's really kind of changes throughout the year. And, mm -hmm. and, and I really like this flavor. <laughs> <laughs> People are like, they want to buy it. And we're like, we're we not. <laughs> One of our uh, beehives, I have to say too, we received from the Honey Bee Conservancy uh -huh. as a, a grant. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, oh wow, that's really good. good. Mm -hmm. And, and so, what do you think? It's different. You know, for for the average Kentuckian or Louisvillian that you has heard a lot about beekeeping before, has seen some of this in action. Um, how hard or easy would it be to actually set up something in their own neighborhood? It, it's not hard if you okay. have a passion for bees, and they are so fascinating. Their society is just on so many. You would think, you know, these little bee brains. Right. They're mm -hmm. not. They're not doing anything other than going and coming. And, but it's it's a society. Uh -huh. It's built in that box is a is a little city of its own. Wow. Working all together uh, mm -hmm. to make this honey. The only other thing I wanted to like, show you, and while we we walk outside, it's not as impressive because they don't have leaves on it right now. But so these four trees we planted since we since we've been you know here in the building. This is the average size tree we plant in a neighborhood. Um, these two first trees here on the right, this is their second year of growth. The one all the way in the back, the one there, this is their like first year of growth. So you can see like the size of the trees we're planting in people's yards is pretty substantial. Mm -hmm. right. So we wanted to make like a, a, an immediate visual impact in a neighborhood as soon as we're done planting. And then we have our compost bin, which you can which, see Yeah, part of it keeps getting knocked, the groundhog is knocking over. <laughs> <laughs> He will not come out while we're, we're here. Oh, he's, I don't blame he, him. Yeah. No. And then we have an urban homesteading program. It's a 10 month course. They meet twice a month here. Um, encompasses anything about urban homesteading from starting your own garden in your backyard, how to do that, what's the size, what do you need to look for, is, you know, where the sun is coming into your yard and that, to chickens, uh, bees. Composting rain barrels. Um, soil composition, everybody does soil tests in their own gardens, um, nutrients, pest management, I mean anything you can think of that's like related to growing food in your backyard is what the class covers. So we work with um, 
the Jefferson County Extension Office and the Soil and Water Conservation District. Wow. Yeah. And so has that been pretty popular? Yeah, we, we sell out within the first day that we posted online. <laughs> and we it usually have about 20, people. Yeah, we wow. have about a 20 person waiting list. That's, yeah. I mean, that's not bad. How long has it been around? Just second year. Oh, It'll be our third year. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah so this big. is like their demonstration garden yeah. for yeah. square foot gardening, which is a very urban way of gardening. Yeah. Um, you can see there's some, if you want some radishes, there's some radishes that need picked. Um, and I'm going to go pick that tomato before I go in because it will freeze. Grab it off the vine if you want. This it's, one. It's going to freeze tonight. Yeah, oh, it's like ready for the salad. It's, it's ready to eat. There's, hey! Yeah, there's a couple of them. Here. Look at so this guy. He said square footage garden. Is that like in reference to the? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can. It nice. really helps <laughs> for an urban gardener who doesn't have a lot of space. It helps compact everything down. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah these are the carrots here. I don't. I don't know. They'll be very big. No. Or the beans. No. Look at that little baby carrots. No. <laughs> I'll be bad. <laughs> <Miniature carrots. laughs> You can't well, you can eat, eat the, the carrot greens. tops. They're just they're yeah. You can eat the greens. Off of yeah, they're um, uh, so with carrots you can overwinter them too. So like you can plant them late in the year, and then even if it freezes, the roots still on the ground will grow back a new top in the spring, and then you can harvest them. You know, kind of uh, around Derby, you have some pretty good sized carrots. This is one <laughs> whole tomato. Um, and then we have a car charging station back here, and it's it's on the list. And, uh, no. have a lot of different stuff going on here. <laughs> well, and we are a staff of three mm -hmm. with two AmeriCorps VISTAs and okay. one VISTA uh, boarding in December. So, uh, we do a lot um, for a small organization. Louisville Groves wants to invite everybody to our last planting of 2019. It's going to be in the Schnitzelberg, Merriweather, Fort Hill neighborhood on Saturday, December 7th. We need about 200 volunteers to come because it's going to be our largest tree planting ever. We're going to plant 266 trees in one day. Woo! We'll provide you with a breakfast from a local bagel company, Nancy's Bagel Grounds, and cook you a nice lunch uh, with soup and focaccia from lots of pasta. So come on and help us. Uh, we'd love to have you. I just want to thank Beargrass Thunder for coming and visiting Healthy House. You can come back anytime and we welcome anybody who sees this video to come visit Healthy House and become involved with Louisville Girls. Help us grow greener, healthier neighborhoods here in our community.